Rogers Show. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. All right, Pat. Take it away, easy. Oh, don't you worry none, Roy. Nail it down and me can do it blindfolded. If you don't mind, just use all four of your eyes. Easy now. Easy now. Now you have done it. I told you to take it easy. <laughs> that blast you, Nellie Bell. What in the far is the matter with you? What are you trying to do? Wire me for sound? Hey, that looks like Dan Barton's wife, Roy. Yeah, there must be something wrong the way she's riding. What's the matter, Ruby? Dan, go kill Monty. You stop him. Hurry. You mean your husband killed Monty Elkhart? Not yet. But they've been fighting. Bad blood. I go to Dunlap. They not help. You go. Hurry. Which way were they headed? Dan, follow Monty. Red Rock Canyon. Pat, borrow Ruby's horse. Red Rock Canyon's one place Nellie Bell can't go. Stay with her, Dale. Right. Yeah. Oh. Come on, Bullet. <laughs> Temper, he may be drunk. Roy, let's get out of here. Whoever done that could pick us off like flies on a wall. We can't leave Barton here wounded. You watch the ridge. Dry gums me out. Well, I'm not Monty Elkhart. I... He's gone, Pat. Looks like the Indian knew he was coming and laid in wait for him. Roy, that Monty Elkhart's bad medicine. He could be up there right now drawing a bead on us. Yeah. That's one Indian they'd never tame. He's as much at home in these hills as you are in Dale's Cafe. I wish I was there right now. Give me a hand, Willie. Take a look. What are we going to do with Barton? We'll send the sheriff back after him. Ruby, isn't that Marty Elkhart up there? It is. He's riding away. Let's follow him. No. about your husband. Why'd you want Marty Elkhart to get away? Ruby, not talk. He's gone anyway. Come on, let's go. Rifle. Yeah, and whoever fired from up here was a good shot. 
They tell me Monty Elkhart can hit a flying quail at 50 yards. Roy, this ain't none of our business. Now let's go get the sheriff and let him tend to it. You can't trail anybody over these rocks anyway. Look, maybe Bullet can. Let's get the horses and see where he leads us. Come on, boy. Roy, I'm telling you, you keep asking for trouble and we're sure going to get it. better stay here and keep Bullet with you. Oh, Roy. Well, I haven't met the Dunlaps yet, and I think we ought to tell them what's happened. They see who that is, Lorraine. Oh, yes. Won't you come in? Thanks. Who is it, Lorraine? I'm Roy Rogers from the Double R Bar Ranch. We're sort of neighbors. Well, who is it? Who is it? Uh, Mr. Rogers' father coming to call. Well, bring him in. Bring him in. I'm Lorraine Dunlap. You mustn't mind my father. He isn't well. Is there something wrong? Yes. A neighbor of yours, Dan Barton, was ambushed and killed. Oh, no. Mrs. Barton was here wanting help. But... Oh, the poor thing. I guess we better tell him. I heard you. Who did it? Father, don't get excited now. Well, Barton was on Monty Elkhart's trail when he was shot. They've been feuding for years. Yeah, that's good. That's good, isn't it? We come out here for peace and quiet, and then <laughs> some crazy Indian killer goes on the warpath. Oh, we'll all be killed in our beds. That's what'll happen. Father, stop it. There's yeah. nothing to worry about. Nothing, do you hear? That's right. This was a private feud between Monty and Barton. It doesn't include anyone else. Of course, of course. I I didn't mean to let go that way. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. He's recovering from a physical and nervous breakdown caused by overwork. We came out here so we could recuperate. I guess I shouldn't have troubled you with this, but... Uh, incidentally, have you seen anything of a little old man with a beard? Why, a man like that came by last night and asked for a handout. He slept in the bunkhouse, and I fed him again this morning before he left. His name was Fowler. Yes, Hermit Hank Fowler. He's an old prospector, sort of peculiar in his ways. I backtracked him here, and you folks live here alone? Well, we have a handyman about the place. Name's Kimberly. He's been with me for years. He's outside someplace. Well, then don't worry. You'll be all right. I see you have protection. That's a beauty. Mauser. Hasn't even been fired yet. You know how to use it, don't you? I think so. Well, I, I haven't been able to get outside to do any hunting yet. You just be careful who you open the door to. Oh, I will, and I hope you'll come back soon. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Mr. Dunlap. Yeah, thanks. Got me buffaloed. She pulled me off buttermilk to keep me from following Monty. Are you sure it was Monty Elkhart? Positive. And you better go tell the sheriff what happened. Okay, but what are you going to do? Pat and I are going out and see Ruby. Maybe she can explain why she acted that way. Monty, you go. Roy Rogers comes. Me hide in back. Hi, Ruby. Ruby, not talk. Well, just a minute, Ruby. We're your friends. We're only trying to help you. We came to tell you that Dan is... I know. Dan's killed. How did you know? Ruby, not talk. <laughs> Bullet, come away from there. Get off, Patty. Get away. Oh, hey. Get... Look out, Ruby. Move. Face, fork and tongue, raised all sour milk. He killed me when I wasn't looking. Well, never mind him, Pat. The main thing is to find out why Ruby was hiding him here. Ruby, what was Monty doing here? I find him here. He no let me go. When Dale was bringing you home, why did you stop her from going after him? I hear shots. I think maybe Monty killed Dan. But Monty say he not do it. 
If he didn't do it, how did he know about it? Maybe Monty tell truth. He not have rifle when we see him. He could have. He hides a lot of things in these hills. Yeah, that's an old trick of his. Monty has all kinds of hiding places. Ruby, you don't seem to take the death of your husband very hard. No. Well, you better wait here till the sheriff comes. He'll probably want to talk to you. Come on, Pat. Suppose the fact that Ruby's half Indian is why she's protecting Monty Elkhart? Well, I don't know, but there's one thing sure. If Monty's guilty, he'll go so far back into the hills we'll never be able to find him. Yeah, and if he had to hit me in the face when my back was turned, I'd have got him quicker than it takes a minute to swim a dipper. What about that old hermit, Hank Fowler? I want him, too. I want him even if you hadn't seen him with that rifle. Remember this circular? Reward! Five thousand simoleons! I reckon that streamlined train over in Nevada. Yeah, I remember. Two men were robbed of almost a half million dollars in that wreck. Half million dollars? Why would anybody carry that much on them? Well, the money was supposed to be used for a king-sized business deal. Old Hermit Hank was at the scene of the wreck. He was the only person noticed who wasn't a passenger. When they tried to question him, he ran away. Yeah, but that was way over in Nevada. Oh, that's not too far for a wanderer like old Hank. He dropped out of the picture about that time, and this is the first news we've had of him since then. Well, you don't suppose a harmless old codger like Hank could have wrecked that train? Well, maybe he ain't as harmless as he's supposed to be. Sheriff, I know a spot where old Hank usually hangs out. Maybe if I went up there alone, I could get him to talk. All right, Roy. I'll appoint you my special deputy. You can help me investigate this case. I'll let you know what I find out. Bye, Sheriff. Goodbye. Bye. to see. People are screaming and are dying. Who did it, Hank? Come on, tell me who wrecked that train. Same one. Same one that bushwhacked Barton. Guess. You guess. Well, that could be you. You better tell me if they want this present I brought you. There's tobacco, sugar, bacon, salt. Hank. 
I didn't get much out of old Hank, but I found this pen in his pocket. It's a page from an old crime magazine. Hey, that's Dan Barton. Yeah, and old Hank knew it. This is his proof of Barton's real identity. A Chicago gangster. Back in 1938, he worked for a Doc Fairfield, head of a mob specializing in warehouse burglaries. He killed a fellow mobster in a quarrel and disappeared. He must have come out here and changed his name to Barton and married Ruby. He was hiding from the law and gang vengeance. All the gang, including Fairfield, was trapped and imprisoned except Dell, alias Barton. This whole thing's as queer as a cast iron pincushion. I wonder if Ruby knew about her husband. Well, we can find out. Better be careful, Roy. The killer don't know how much old Hank told you. When he learns you're walking around, he'll try for you again. That's one way to bring him out in the open. If everybody knows I'm still alive, he'll make his move. I'll start with Ruby Barton. I'm going with you. All right. She'd be more likely to talk to you than she would me. Well, Pat, you stay here and look after things. This is one time he won't need you. Let me change my clothes and I'll meet you outside. All right. Come on, Sheriff. Well, start my socks if every time something exciting happens, I gotta be nursemaid to this beanery. Could we talk with you a few minutes? Roy has some questions he wants to ask you. Ruby, did you know that your husband's real name was Patty Dell and was wanted for murder in Chicago? No. I thought many times something wrong. Well, old Hank the Hermit knew it. That's why he come around for handouts. Dan give him grub steak. And Dan don't do that unless he have good reason. Blackmail. Petty form of blackmail. Old Hank Fowler, just before he died, told me that your husband had a habit of getting drunk and beating you. You hated your husband, didn't you, Ruby? Dan a pig. Monty Elkhart, my uncle. But I not want them kill each other. Monty know people think he did it. But he say he did not. Where is he now? I'd like to talk to him. He'll never be able to clear himself if he goes into hiding. Please, Ruby, you can trust Roy. I not tell. Then you'll have to come along with us and be placed under arrest for withholding information. I go. I'm glad you came after me. It'll save me the trouble of trying to track you down. Now I'll have to take you both in for questioning. Here, Roy. Get on your horses.
Well, I guess that just about does it, Roy. Thanks to you and Dale. A Mauser rifle, the same as used to kill Dan Barton and Hank Fowler. And Monty came after you just like you said the killer would. Yeah, but there's a lot of things about this that just don't add up. And I'm still not convinced. you people would like to know that we caught Monty Elkhart and have him locked up in town. Oh, that's a relief. The only trouble is he won't talk. Just says he didn't kill Barton and Fowler. Hmm. Naturally, he'd deny it. I guess so. Fairfield, where'd you say you were from? Why, Oakland. Well, what's that you called me? Fairfield, Doc Fairfield. You're not done laughing. You're not shaking anymore. That nervous breakdown of yours was just a fake. Doc Fairfield. I don't even know what he's talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You were the brains of a bunch of crooks in Chicago. Barton worked for you. He double-crossed you and ran away. When you found him out here, you decided to shut him up for good. Mr. Rogers, you don't know what you're saying. I'm afraid I do. You see, Hank saw you kill Barton. And he also knew that you wrecked that train over in Nevada. For the last time, I'm not Doc Fairfield, and I... Uh... Any fool would know that I can't even get out of this wheelchair. Cut the act, Doc. Old Hank talked before he died. And if that rifle's been fired since I was here last, there'll be enough evidence to convict you of murder. You had to use this gun to kill old Hank, because he got away with the one you used to kill Barton. Father! How could you? I'm sorry, Lorraine. I know this is a shock to you. You just won't put that gun down, because this place is covered front and rear. Oh, is it? You were right, Dunlap. I scouted around, and here's what I found. Fine work, Nils. I'm sorry, Roy. You killed me when I wasn't looking. Father, please. Lorraine, your finer sensibilities have been overdeveloped by your education. After all, it was for you I planned this one last crime so we could retire on the proceeds. Some proceeds? A half a million bucks? And now that I have it, nothing or no one will take it from me. Lorraine, Father. get Roger's guns, and then we'll all step outside. Don't do it, Lorraine. You can't be that loyal to your father. Stop and think. If you do that, you'll be like him, a murderer. Think, Lorraine. Lorraine. Father, I don't care what you've done. Give me the gun! You got any more? Well, they just called me Three Gun Brady. Come on, honey. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. Honey, you didn't do anything. I didn't mean to do it. But you didn't. Well, you're both free to go, thanks to Roy and Dale. Although they're the ones that brought you in, they weren't satisfied that you were guilty. Money, I realize you attacked me only because you thought I was going to arrest Ruby. You plenty smart, Roy Rogers. Money, Elkhart, not forget. And Ruby, thank you, Dale. I'm glad it turned out this way for you, Ruby, for both of you. Your pony's right outside there, Money. Okay, Sarah. Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hi, Dale. Hi. I want to thank you for all that you've done for me. Oh, never mind that, honey. We'll see you next June. Yeah, we'll see you next June when school's out. What do you mean, you'll see it? Where do you think you're going? Oh, I thought I'd go back to school in the rain to get a little more educated. But you can't do that. Lorraine goes to a girl's school. My ma didn't raise no foolish children. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh -huh.
happy trail.